Free performance? Yeah, that is what we are exploring today in our video and I have to apologize for the clickbait video title first because many of you guys have the same thought as we did as well. Thus, installing Tiny11, a heavily trimmed down version of Windows 11, give us free performance on the ROG Ally and that also made us think, can we actually get extra battery life if we're gonna use Tiny11 as well? And after doing extensive tests and sanity checks, I have the results here. I do have to tell you first, you shouldn't go into this video with any expectations in mind. And without further ado, here are all of the results that I have obtained. So installing Tiny11 is simple enough, it is made by NTDev and you can head into archive.org and then you can find a few versions available. I downloaded the 22H2 Beta 2 version since it is made for x86. Then there's also an R1 version which does not stand for Release 1, it is actually made for ARM machines. While that is downloading, we can also head into the ASUS website and download all the drivers for the ROG Ally. Thankfully, it is already made available on the support page, so I just grabbed the essentials like Wi-Fi driver, the Armory Crate SE installer, and also a browser of my choice, in this case, Google Chrome. If you want to use Microsoft Edge, remember you will also have to download the installer first because Tiny11 does not come with any browsers at all. Then I just put the downloaded ISO into Rufus and create an installation USB stick and the Ally should just boot into the USB drive to install, right? Well, technically, it just sounds as simple as that, but in reality, it's not. So, as you can see here, we only have one USB Type-C port on the ROG Ally, so I have to use a converter to convert the Type-A to Type-C. But I'm not sure if this is a bug or whatsoever, because usually we just hold the power and volume buttons on the ROG Ally, and then it will boot into the BIOS menu. But if I have a USB stick attached to the ROG Ally, then it cannot boot into BIOS and I have no idea why. And fun fact for you guys, this ROG Ally cannot boot from the microSD card slot and I have no idea why. Sounds like a rather weird limitation. So I came up with a solution that don't have to deal with the BIOS menu at all. I just nuked the SSD by putting it into an external SSD enclosure formatted it clean and then pop it back into the ROG Ally. Then that will make the ROG Ally to boot directly via USB instead. After that, I got everything installed and everything ran fine just like a usual Windows 11 installation. But if you realize though, there are zero pre-installed applications. Literally zero. There is even no web browser and we still have Windows Update and Windows Defender alongside with Microsoft Store and these are only the essentials that you are given with. And since Wi-Fi doesn't work, we don't have to deal with the login to your Microsoft accounting when you are installing and setting up Windows 11. Then I proceeded to install the browser and also the drivers that we downloaded earlier and updated everything to the latest version. And also, we have updated the BIOS version to 3.19 and Armory Crate SE to version 1.2.10.0. Then finally, we can get started with the testing. Let's start off with the free performance part of the ROG Ally. So we plugged in the charger to get the maximum 30 watts available. And then we used benchmark tools from 3DMark to get a consistent run. We ran each benchmark at least three times to make sure that there's no anomaly and this is the result. Look, we didn't mean to deceive you and I really apologize for the clickbait title at the beginning of this video and I mean the performance difference is negligible but actually measurable. Tiny11 did indeed make the ROG Ally perform slightly better, ever so slightly but you will definitely not feel any tangible difference in terms of FPS numbers if you're using Tiny11. How about battery life then? Well, we did the benchmark for this too. We are using PCMark 10's gaming battery life benchmark and here are the results. That is just very disappointing and I was expecting some battery life improvements. However, there are still reasons to actually migrate from Windows 11 to Tiny11, the removal of bloatware. Seriously, there are a lot of unnecessary things included with your Windows 11 and as you can see in this start menu here, I don't know why you will want to download all of them and use on your operating system, especially the Ally, so Tiny11 just, you know, don't include them at all. 
So starting from a fresh copy that only includes the bare minimum actually benefits if you want to just declutter your operating system and squeeze every megabyte of capacity that you can get from your SSD. Remember 512 gigs is actually not that much, so every megabyte does matter. But is it actually worth going through all of that trouble to install Tiny11? That depends on you. Personally, I think yes, I do like my operating systems to be as clean as possible and uh, I can't really show you any footage of the RJ Ally running Tiny11 right now since I have already formatted the RJ Ally again to this. Video coming soon and do remember to subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video.